Hi everyone, we are back for the rest of chapter one, maybe the first part of chapter two. I don't know, we're just gonna wing it. It's crazy times, people. Uh, but we are gonna continue with Banicula, the uh, hair raising tail. Uh, so remember if we, if you watched yesterday's or whenever you watch it, whatever, um, we had just met Harold the dog, he is telling our story, and he was chatting with Chester the cat about why the family had just, just brought home this mysterious uh, little bundle that was a little um, tiny bunny rabbit with very shiny eyes, if you recall. So here we are, Benicula. Let's see what happens. Well, what do you think, I asked. I don't think rabbits like milk, he answered. Chester and I were unable to continue our conversation because a deafening crash commanded our attention. Pete yelled from the hallway, Ma, Toby broke the rabbit's house. I didn't. I just dropped it. Pete won't let me carry it. It's too big. Toby's too little. I am not. You are too. Okay, fellas, Mrs. Monroe called out as she entered with the milk and lettuce. Let's try to get it in here with as little hysteria as possible, please. Chester turned to me and said under his breath, that lettuce looks repulsive, but if there's any milk left, I get it. I certainly wasn't going to argue with him. I'm a water man myself. At that moment, the crate arrived, barely standing the strain of being pulled in two directions at once. Ma, Toby says he's going to keep the rabbit in his room. That's not fair. Harold sleeps in his room. Only sometimes, I thought when I know he's got a leftover ham sandwich in his drawer. Toby's a nice kid, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't hurt that he shares his stash with me. It was, after all, at one of those late night parties in Toby's room that I first developed my taste for chocolate cake. And Toby, noting my preference, has kept me in chocolate cake ever since. Pete, on the other hand, doesn't believe in sharing, and the only time I tried to sleep on his bed, he rolled over on me and pinned me by my ear so that I couldn't move for the rest of the night. I had a crick in my neck for days. Don't really give your dogs chocolate. But he's mine, Toby said. I found him. You sat on him, you mean. I found him and he's sleeping in my room. You can keep smelly old Harold in your room in Chester too if you want to, but I'm going to keep the rabbit in mine. Smelly old Harold. I would have bitten his ankle, but I knew he hadn't changed his socks for a week. Smelly indeed. Mr. Monroe spoke up. I think the best place for the rabbit is right here in the living room on that table by the window. It's light there and he'll get lots of fresh air. Peter's taller than I am, Toby cried. He'll be able to see the rabbit better. Too bad, Squirt. Okay, said Mrs. Monroe through clenched teeth. Let's put him to bed and make him comfortable and then we can all get some sleep. I'm sure none of your parents are talking to you like this these days and I'm sure none of you are fighting and whining with each other, right? Right, okay. Why, P asked, I don't want to go to sleep. Mrs. Monroe smiled a little too sweetly at Pete. Look, Ma, said Toby, he's not drinking his milk. Chester nudged me in the ribs. Didn't I tell you, he asked. Excuse me while I make myself available. Hey, said Toby, we got to name him. Can't that wait until tomorrow, asked Mr. Monroe. The boys shouted in unison. No, he has to have a name right now. I have to say I agreed with them. It took them three days to name me and those were the three most anxious days of my life. I couldn't sleep at all worrying that they were really going to call me Fluffy as Mrs. Monroe had suggested. Well all right sighed Mrs. Monroe. What about oh say Bun Bun. Oh, oh. There she goes again I thought. Where does she get them? Ugh we all said. Well, then how about Fluffy, she offered, hopefully. Pete looked at his mother and smiled. You never get up, give up, do you, Ma? Meanwhile, Chester, who had also been named Fluffy for a short time, was rubbing against Mrs. Monroe's ankles and purring loudly. No, Chester, not now, she said, pushing him aside. He wants to help us name him, don't you, Chester? Toby asked as he scooped him up into his arms. Chester shot me a look. I could tell this was not what he'd had in mind. Come on, Harold, Toby called. You've got to help with the name, too. I joined the family, and serious thinking began. We all peered into the box. It was the first time I had really seen him. So, this is a rabbit, I thought. He sort of looks like Chester, 
only he's got longer ears and a shorter tail and a motor in his nose. Well, said Pete after a moment, since we found him at the movies, why don't we call him Mr. Johnson? There was a moment of silence. Who's Mr. Johnson? asked Toby. The guy who owns the movie theater, Pete answered. No one seemed to like the idea. How about Prince? said Mr. Monroe. Dad, said Toby, are you kidding? Well, I, I had a dog named Prince once, he replied lamely. Prince, I thought, that's a silly name for a dog. We found him at a Dracula movie. Let's call him Dracula, Toby said. That's a stupid name, said Pete. No, it's not. Anyway, I found him, so I should get to name him. Mom, you're not going to let him name him, are you? That's favoritism, and I'll be traumatized if you do. Mrs. Monroe looked in wonder at Pete. Please, Mom, please, Dad, let's name him Dracula, cried Toby. Please, please, please. And with each please, he squeezed Chester a little harder. Mrs. Monroe picked up the bowl of milk and moved toward the kitchen. Chester followed her every movement with his eyes, which now seemed to be popping out of his head. When she reached the kitchen door, she turned back and said, let's not have any more arguments. We'll compromise. He's a bunny and we found him at a Dracula movie. So he'll call him Bunnicula. Bunnicula. That should make everybody happy, including me. What about me, muttered Chester. I won't be happy until she puts down that milk. Well, guys, is that okay with you? She asked. Toby and Pete looked at one another and then at the rabbit. A smile grew on Toby's face. Yeah, Ma, I think that name is just right. Pete shrugged. It's okay, but I get to feed him. Okay, I'm going to put the milk back in the fridge. Maybe he'll drink it tomorrow. What about Chester? Toby said, dropping the frantic cat to the floor. Maybe he would like it. Chester made a beeline for Mrs. Monroe and looked up at her plaintively. Oh, Chester doesn't want any more milk, do you, Chester? You've already had your milk today. She reached down, patted Chester on his head, and moved into the kitchen. Chester didn't move. Okay, bedtime, said Mr. Monroe. Good night, Benicula, Toby said. Good night, Count Benicula, Pete said sarcastically, what I took to be his attempt at a Transylvanian accent, which is that, you know, blah, blah, that accent. I may be wrong, but I thought I saw a flicker of movement from the cage. Good night, Harold. Good night, Chester. I licked Toby good night. Good night, Smelly Harold. Good night, dumb Chester. I drooled on Pete's foot. Mom, Harold drool drooled on my foot. Good night, Pete, Mrs. Monroe said with great finality. She came back into the living room and then more calmly. Good night, Harold. Good night, Chester. Mr. and Mrs. Monroe went up the stairs together. You know, dear, Mrs. Monroe said, that was very clever. Benicula. I could never have thought of a name like that. Oh, I don't know, Robert, she smiled as she put her arm through his. I think Prince is a lovely name, too. The room was quiet. Chester was still sitting by the closed kitchen door in a state of shock. Slowly, he turned to me. I wish they had named him Fluffy, was all he said. Then there's a little picture. Very angry. Chester. And then I don't think I'm going to read the next chapter because these end up taking me longer than I think they will. Um, but the next one looks like it's really short, so we'll definitely get through that one next time. It's called Music in the Night. We'll see you tomorrow. See what happens. Bye!